All right. If it seems better now, I'll restate what I was saying. So I was saying basically uh, that I'm briefly summarizing the concept of a string as I sort of formalized it so I could do a proof at one point about something. And uh, basically if you take a string and the idea is then edit is something you can do to a string that will produce a new string where the tail of the string is the same, the head of the string is the same, and some portion in the middle of the string gets replaced with another string. And that can, that encapsulates all the idea, or not, I don't know, that, that one idea can, can perform insertions, deletions, and replaces. So it's pretty useful uh, to just boil all of your edits down to that one concept. So what an undo turned out to be is if you just think of the... Um, the uh, the buffer, as I'm denoting it as S, as having these states, where it starts at some state zero, and each edit you do transitions it into another state, like so, in this direction. Then each of those edits, as I was describing, is just an operation that takes some range of the string and replaces it with another string. And uh, that's not too hard to reverse. To reverse it, you just take the same range in the new string and replace it with the old value of that range in this string, right? So it's not necessarily the same range because it could be a shorter or longer string, but the corresponding range so that you go back, it's not that hard to construct. So an edit, a reverse edit, you know, something like this, is not that hard to construct that would take S1 to S0. So that's... Um, the first step is just being able to encode a reverse edit. And then if you can save a bunch of these reverse edits, as you make an every time you make an edit, you would just save one of these reverse edits into a uh, into a stack and that makes your undos, right? So what you have is sort of this list of like the undo for the first edit all the way until the undo for some edit way over here in the future and I'll call it like edit n or something. Right, so there's your undo stack, and then when the time comes to do an undo, all you have to do is apply an edit again, because a reverse edit is just another kind of edit, as I was just describing. So every edit, you don't have to mark like, oh, this was an insert, and this was a delete, and this was a replace, or anything fancy like that. You just say, every time you make one of these, whenever you do an edit, you're inserting some amount, some kind of string, you're replacing one piece of string. You're replacing a piece of the buffer with another string, and the reverse of that is also just replacing this buffer with a string. So, um, what you could say is that S1 goes to S0 if you use the inverse of this, would be the right way for me to write that, actually. Right, so this is just another edit. It's not a, a new kind of edit, it's just another edit, and you encode it the same way. So, you just have um, a stack of those. Then, when you go to apply an edit, you're just taking that, popping it off, and putting it onto some kind of redo stack over here. So then redo knows uh, what it will do if you try to redo it. It, can, it has the ability to redo the original edits, right? And then the undo loses this one, and it becomes there, right? So it goes to n minus 1. Shoot, I had to undo a lot there. But anyways, it goes to n minus 1 and then your redo just contains the n, right? Um, so that's basically all it took, and then the only thing that happens is whenever you basically have three concepts, and you have edits as you first generate them, you have undoing, which is when you take something here and apply it, and then compute its inverse and pop it onto the redo stack, or push it onto the redo stack, and then you have redos where you take this thing and apply it, take the top of this stack, apply it, and push it onto the top of this stack. And, or you take this edit, you apply it, and you push its inverse onto the top of this stack, right? So, those the difference between doing a redo and producing a new edit right here is that when you produce a new edit right here, that has the effect that R becomes empty, right? You set the redo stack to become empty. So that's sort of how undo redo works if you apply it in that sort of standard sense and uh, there's not much to that but uh, if you decide you want to do a history 
uh, you have to add a little. You have to add one more thing to the picture to make it work. Because what will happen in a history is basically you have some kind of state T, which includes the states of the buffer, the undo stack, and the redo stack all at once, right? So you have to know all three of these things to know the full state if you're going to keep a history, is the idea here. And so the problem is you could say at each step, save these things and then restore them. But just like up here, I don't want to save the file four times and then use that as my undo redo stack. I want to be able to encode it as a system of edits. The same thing is true of this. So I want to have a new kind of edit that can edit a T and that will apply to all three of these things. So um, this, is a, this is a new kind of edit. So these are like text edits. Uh, but down here what you have is you have something like here's the full state and we'll call it F and F1 takes the full state from T0 to T1 like so. Right? And uh, um, so what that does is it means we have to have some kind of edit that not only edits the S but also the U and the R. So I've already described the three basic operations I want to have, which are editing a thing, uh, being able to undo, and being able to redo. So then the question becomes, how do I encode them in an F? And the way that works out is an F basically has a few parts. It has, um, whoops, that's a weird looking F. An F has in it an edit. So what it does to the actual buffer, it has the um, the state of undo. Uh, well, like I said, we don't want to store the state of undo. It has the effect it has on undo. So it's like, what is the new undo given? Um, I would call it like F U given the old undo and what is the new redo given the old redo right so now if we've already got as I described just getting undo done you already have edit figured out so the question is what is this and how do I invert them because in order to make a history what you're gonna have to do is you basically have a bunch of F's from F1 negative 1 all the way to your history is F1 all the way to Fn invert. And then you don't have a redo stack for history. It works more like a Emacs undo buffer where if you go backwards, it grows forwards again by just putting the, in the reverse of these inverses. So basically you put Fn and then Fn minus 1 and so on here as you're going backwards if you go all the way back to the beginning, for example. So, and that way you never lose anything off of your history. Because the advantage of the Emacs undo, even though it's hard to use, is that it's like for short term, for short range undoing, it's very useful for um, never losing any information. And that's what this history is going to achieve. But the other thing that uh, was originally proposed by Matthew uh, Van de Vander, who's also the guy who made the, the logo for anyone who's watching this who... Uh, doesn't know that, uh, is this this idea that we would conclude the U and the R in in the state that we are going to restore through the history. So we have undo, redo, and a history. So now the question is, given those three edits I described, what was their effects on undo and redo? And basically the idea is you have, um, if you have a normal edit, so normal that's a weird looking O, but just bear with it, just deal with it. Um, then you, you generate some E, and then the new undo stack is the old undo stack, uh, and then you, I'll use dot dot to say append the inverse of your edit, and the redo stack is emptied. Whatever was in it is dropped when you do a normal edit. So that's one kind of operation. Another kind of operation is undo. Whoop, whoop. It's pretty rough, but it'll have to do. So uh, for undo, all you do is you take 
one thing off of u. So you say u equal u prime equals u um, less uh, whatever was at the end. So we'll call that e n. And uh, that little thing there is supposed to be a minus sign inside of a circle, which is sometimes used for sets, and I'm abusing notation since I don't feel like describing it all right now. As I said, I took a little bit of time to define this stuff for myself. But anyways, the redo stack becomes whatever it was uh, appended to en. All right, so that's undo. And redo, I'm going to draw a redo right here, and you'll see why in a minute becomes the opposite of that, right? Undo becomes undo dot dot e n and redo becomes redo less e n. Right? So you can see that the undo and redo operation completely are the opposites of each other in this scenario. Um So if we're going to encode f, anytime I do an undo or a redo, I can it's just enough to say that this, you know, if I do an undo, store the opposite of whatever effect it had when I did the undo, which is to say store the redo that we pushed on that stack, also store it in the history as a part of f, and then also let it know that this new thing we have to do is a redo. So now we're labeling that f as this is a redo type operation, so it will have this effect on u and r. So whenever I do an undo, the history stores a redo, because they're exact opposites. So now the only problem is, what's the exact opposite of a normal? And the problem there is this. How do you reverse clearing out what was there? And so you have to kind of say that when you're looking through your history, if you have a bunch of if you say I perform a normal edit, a normal edit, a normal edit, and then I do an undo, undo, so these two first normal edits are gone, but that grew the redo stack, right? So the state didn't actually get undone, it was just a different operation. And then I do another normal edit. Well, in the um, in the history, I need a reverse of a normal, whatever that will be, a reverse of another normal, a reverse of another normal, and then I need redo redo and I need a reverse of another normal right so when you go backwards through this history what has to happen is as soon as you play this the redo stack has to grow as if you had just done two undos right so basically these two redos have to get pushed on the redo stack was the realization I came to because the question was that I was dealing with was how are you going to regrow the redo stack and the obvious thing to do is just say well when you clear it store in your history the old state so it'd be like store r in h right so that you can restore your redo later but it, it occurred to me that all of those redos are going to be on your history right here right now it gets a little bit more complicated than that and I'll explain why but basically that's what the trick is is your reverse normal, I'll call it, um, I'll just call it normal, uh, reverse normal. I'll use the full name. Oof. Normal. Does that make sense? So you've got this, uh, new concept for reversing a normal that's not the same as an undo, right? So reversing a normal edit is not an undo, it's not a redo, it needs its own kind of uh, uh, it needs its own kind of uh, reverse. And what this one does is basically um, the undo stack shrinks by one to reverse that, what happened up there. So the undo stack less the edit that was performed and the redo stack has to become whatever this is so the way to notate that was a little confusing to me and I haven't really worked it out yet but the redo stack basically becomes the redo stack of um, 
of like I minus one, if you will, right? So if you're looking through your states, that means your redo stack needs to become whatever the redo stack was right here. So that's the notation I'm using. So the question now will be how do we compute that? Because that's the only mystery left. And as I showed, you can kind of just assume that they're going to be here, but it gets a little more complicated. Because what if you have n n n u u redo undo redo undo n. So that's three normal edits. Then I undo two of them. I redo one of them because I think maybe I want it, but then I said no, I definitely didn't want it. Undo it again, and then I make a normal edit. So at each of these steps here, I have a redo stack that contains one item, two items, then one item again, then two items again, right? So now the question is, uh, how am I going to get how am I going to get so that when I am going backwards, I have to have an reverse edit here that knows that there's two things on the redo stack and gets the right things. And also, what are those right things? What were the two things on the redo stack? And it turns out that that's kind of a fun problem to solve. And that's why I got really excited when this first happened was because it turned out to be just a fun little algorithm to come up with. But basically, you can think of it as um, as you're going backwards, you have some kind of count of how many undos you see. N, N, N. As you're going backwards, you say, okay, so up here you just take that, that's the you push that onto the stack, redo stack, and you push that onto the redo stack, and that's it. In this case, you push this onto the redo stack, and then you see, oh, there's an undo. So then you like you raise the counter level one. And then you say, here's a redo, so lower the counter level again. So you don't push this onto the stack, because when you saw it, the counter level was too high. Then you back up one more, and then you add that to the undo stack, to the redo stack. And that's basically it. That's all you have to do, is to figure out how, which of these you want to include. It's the ones that aren't basically being sort of shadowed by an undo before them. So that was, that was it. So, for example, if you saw some stuff, and then you did an undo, 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 and then you said, no, give me those back, for you do redo, redo. By the time you're done with those redos, your undo stack, your redo stack is empty. There's nothing left in the redo stack, and then you do a normal edit. You didn't actually lose anything. So when you get here, the reverse is going to look backwards and go, oh, there's some undos and redos next, so let's see if I need to put anything on the redo stack. And it turns out that all you have to do is sort of treat these like braces, where if you see an undo, that precludes using that redo in the stack. That one doesn't need to go on the stack because it was not on the stack when the normal edit happened. So there you go. That's all you got to do. So um, basically what I do in short is that I'm looking through the history. I If I see a reverse normal, I look to see if there's an undo or redo, and then I walk backwards and I find any of the redos that need to be pushed onto the redo stack, and I do the push. Um, that's it. I can show you how it looks if you'd like to know. If you'd like to know. And then we can get started with the tree thing. If everything's running today. Okay, very good. There's a high chance that things are broken because I was in the middle of editing stuff and it looks like they are. Something's broken. Whoa. Let's try and cancel the job. Huh. Okay, well, for now I just need to clear out my super because I'm not quite... Let me get this where it's visible. I'll clear out the super. And... I can hopefully run it then, because that's the only thing that should be any different. Okay. Okay, so I hope you can see it. It's a little bit small right now, but there's basically a couple. I'm just deleting, first of all, I'm just deleting chunks of the code. 
and you can see my undo and my history are growing and right now they're the same because everything I can undo I can also just go backwards through in the history so now the question is uh, what do you want to see first I can do I'll just I'll just I'll just do it so let's start by saying I didn't want to delete that last function I'm gonna undo everything that happened there so you can see the undo stack is not like the or the undo slider here everything left of it is undo everything to the right of it is blue that's redo and it doesn't change the total of those two things doesn't change so we're stepping through states and each of those bars is kind of an edit and each of or each of the each of the tick marks is like a state and each of the bars is an edit right and I'm just going backwards until I find the spot that I want where this long function is back in place boom okay now what's happening with the history on the other hand is an undo is still cons considered whoops an undo is still considered a, a type of operation right so that didn't it did grow because these are all edits and those are undos and undos are treated as a different type of operation in the eyes of the history so I've really just done more operations now if I start typing I can go all right, here's my new stuff. And right away, the undo stack lost all of the redo stuff. All the redo is gone. But the un the history kept it, right? So if you wanted to get any of that back, the, the idea here is all this blue, whenever you see a blue section, that's undos and redos. Whenever you ever see a gray section in the history, that's um, normal edits. So if I start backing up through the history, you can see I'm ticking the history back. Each time I tick the history back, the undo uh, shrinks because I'm making it as if I never made those edits. So it's not like I get a redo on the undo stack. I just don't have that at, at all, except that I can always get those back because they're on the history. Now, the next, the, each of those is reverse edits. So what I just did was several reverse edits. I'm going to do one more reverse edit. And this reverse edit is going to be the one that looks and sees a bunch of redos on its stack and pushes them all onto the redo stack. Boom. And just like that we have our redos back, right, on the undo undo redo bar. And then from here I could it gets kind of interesting because you have two different bars that basically will do very similar things. I could now just con conduct my redos. I could just do them and it'll delete this function because that's what that's what I undid, right? All those all those redos there were, th were spots where I undid deleting the function. So if I redo them, I re-delete the function. But as I do that, it will grow the history, and you'll get to see what a redo looks like in the history, right? So if I do a redo, the inverse of that is an undo, and that goes in the history. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start doing redos, and each redo on the undo bar is just going to move this thing to the right. But on the bottom, it's actually going to start doing new operations, and it's going to look crazy for a second, then I'll explain it. Alright, so now it's like I had it when I was right here in the history. I'm not going to click because then it'll start moving around again. But what's all the red ticks? Well, I decided at some point, and those might, I might not keep them because maybe they are confusing, I don't know. But those are basically the less, I, I wanted red ticks for debugging and I kind of like them, so I guess I'll leave it to you guys to give me feedback. But these red ticks here are in a gray bar, so those are normal edits that are on the history, right? So basically what happened there is, here I was, and I went backwards, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ticks. And every time I go backwards, the history doesn't shrink, the history only grows. So the reverse of whatever I did had to get pushed onto the front of the history. Now we didn't see it happen, because what actually happens is I have a cursor and I have a stack head, and while the cursor is moving backwards, the stack head moves forward, putting the reverse there. And it always takes the average of those two points as where the where to end the bar, so that you don't see the, the bar growing as you're using the history, but it is growing. 
And then once you're done, if you try to go forwards through the history, like you're moving back through the history and you decide, you know what, I went back too far, you want to go forwards through the history, it'll move the cursor forward and move the history head backwards. That way you don't have to, like, go backwards, and then if you go forwards, it grows the history in some weird way. It's just easier in that case if you don't have a history and a head. The other thing you could do is say if you start trying to move forward, that's really just the same as leaping the cursor to where the head is now and then going backwards, which is basically what I do, except I don't leap the cursor forward. That way the history doesn't have to grow more than it has to. Because, I mean, from a programmer point of view, I kind of want to reduce how much redundant stuff is there, because the history will start to have a lot of redundant stuff. Okay. So those red dots there are all from going backwards through the history, uh, and the forward history has to play the inverses of those out. Whereas these are different. These are what showed up as I was doing redos. So they're not actually the effect of me playing the history backwards, but they could have been. I could have taken the history all the way back to here, and those red dots would have shown up. But what I did is I took the history back to before there, and I played the Ys, because me hitting Control y to do a redo is exactly the same in the eyes of the history system as the history system itself undoing an undo. right? So, so whether or not I press redo or I move the undo back or I move the history back through past undos to redo them, it sees those as redos and puts them on there. So, that's pretty much it. Um, there is one more, there is one more cool thing to see, so let me put in some edits again. And then, once I'm done, I will undo them, and then I will redo them. So you can see those redos showing up as red spots there again. Now, I'll do some newer stuff. Okay, now if I move backwards through the history, when we get right here, this time, the point is that those red dots tell it not to take any of the blue dots. Each of those red dots increases the counter, as I was saying, it sort of brackets out the undos, or the undos brackets out the redos. Depends on whether you're talking about their inverses or not. But if you're looking at what the data is in the history, the undos, which are those red dots, are going to bracket out the redos, which are the blue dots. And so the history doesn't actually, or the redo stack doesn't grow at all. And then now it just sort of magically works because each of these is an undo. So as I backwards back up through the history, it applies undos, and that grows the stat, the redo stack as well. Like that is just growing the redo stack by applying the undos, which would normally have grown the redo stack. So anyway, that's basically the whole thing. Let me see how much time I did on that. That's wow, that's 40 minutes. Well, 10 minutes for getting my audio to work, and then 30 minutes for history stuff. Any other cues before I? Wrap that up and look at my tree. I also did a little bit of playing with my UI so that you could add and remove whichever ones you wanted. Uh, okay, so D7 Samurai asks, what's a normal edit? Let me um, be a little bit more specific. So, so basically, a normal edit, there is one kind of small thing I glossed over. So let me pop open this. So right now you can see the bars aren't there. It's just basically set up to, if there are no edits in the stack, if there's only one state that has ever exist, S0, and there's not any edits, it doesn't show the bar yet. And then as soon as I do an edit, you'll see it shows up, right? So now I have before the S happened, and after the S happened. And I can undo my S, and I can redo my S, right? So now, uh, the 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 trick is if I insert a T, that didn't grow the undo history. It didn't grow the history either. It didn't grow either of those. Neither one of those became longer for that. 
So the point is that uh, when whenever you insert a character, it or whenever you do any edit, it has to determine whether or not to merge that with the previous edit or not, right? And the way it merges things is it says like, oh, so the previous edit was it was inserting between two points that were the same. So like it was an insert. It can detect something's an insert because its start and its end position are equal to each other, and it was one character. This thing is also an insert of one character, and they're both alphanumerics, for example, which is actually what I'm doing. They're both alphanumerics that were inserted. But one like as one single character, it then merges that into a single edit. So it looks at what edit is there, and then it looks at the new edit and decides whether or not to merge that with the current edit. And that doesn't really play with this system in any way that I've discovered that's bad. That is to say, I haven't found any bad interactions because of that. Um, and so controlling what your granularity isn't too hard because you could, if I push this bra bracket now, if I push a, uh, a curly brace, it will add a new tick mark because it doesn't merge the brace to the everything else. Right, so there you should have seen a new one. That'll add a new one when I hit new line. This will add a new one and this will add a new one. So those are all considered one. And, but it wouldn't be that hard to say, you know what, I want to merge all single character edits as long as they're contiguous. Or you could say, I want to merge all single character edits that are alphanumeric. You could also say, because one thing I don't do is I can undo that and go back to not having that. And then I can type uh, like that and go, oh shoot, I don't have the S. Go back to the beginning. If I insert the S, that won't merge. But you could do that. So really it's just a matter of looking at the previous, at the top edit in the stack and the new one that you're going to add and determining whether or not to merge them. Um, so the granularity can kind of be scaled independently, and right now it's the only granularity. The only granularity trick I'm doing is uh, if you have a bunch of contiguous edits of alphanumeric characters that gets merged. Yeah. So the other thing is like white space is a little bit of a weird subject. So if I go struct space word brace, brace, semicolon. So if my first three undoes undo semicolon, brace, and brace. And then my next one undoes, undoes word. And then the next one undoes the space and the struct. So space there got merged into struct, but it prevented the next thing from merging. And the, you, there's basically infinite infinite like uh, fiddling you could do with how you want to set that up. And I just haven't cared about it. Or I haven't thought about it too much. I just have one sort of merging system in there. Uh, basically, the rule right now is it looks at the previous thing and determines if it is mergeable with the current thing. So it's a sort of binary relationship. It says, given this thing and this thing, are they mergeable? Uh, so base and they're mergeable if they're alphanumeric or have an underscore is my current rule. And the end of this one is, and the beginning of this one is the end of that one. If I have like. I could get to a situation where I say, here are, um, here's a thing, like a word, and if you go and insert in the middle of it, merge that into one edit, but that's kind of tough, because that, I mean, it's not too hard, it would just be a matter of figuring out how to recompute the, the previous thing, because basically what happened there was I had, uh, I had my, my, the top thing on the stack was, uh, a range, and then I did an, uh, I did a, another thing inside that range. So the new thing, once you're, they're merged, would have a totally different string. You'd have to insert things into its replacement string, and you'd also have to like recompute the edges on, in a smarter way. So I don't do that, but again, I, it's kind of independent of this stuff. So it is, it's a different topic that I haven't explored much. It's like all I have is alphanumeric merge. Okay, and the other thing I don't have yet, if you look at my his my little undo thing, there's a, uh, another, there's two little sm side ticks to this, which are uh, what, uh, saving and uh, history persistence. So these aren't currently, uh, these are current, like this history is just like an undo stack in that you lose it when you close. And what might be kind of cool, I was thinking, is to have some way of 
doing a history that you save. Now, obviously, that history grows pretty fast, and it uh, would get very big over time. So I probably want some way to have, like, a coarse grain history um, when you save it so that when you load it, it's not uh, it's not crazy.